Hello and welcome to part two of how to be the greatest support player you can be while solo queuing in Rainbow Six Siege. We learned quite a few lessons in part one on my main channel, which you haven't watched. Go watch that first. It's great. And then, uh, then come back and watch this. So basically, as a support, you want to be trying to help your teammates thrive, which we didn't really succeed in in the first part because, eh, well, if you watched it, you would understand. But we're going to try a little bit more to help our teammates survive longer, thrive harder, and support them better, which might even could be considering like coming off of like the hard breach flank watch role and help them out with like some global abilities like a lion, a finca, a dokubi, something that can support them if they're playing that hyper aggressive playstyle. So supporting your team might look like opening a breach, but it also might look like running some global abilities to help them just stay up longer because sometimes they are just getting smoked right off the start of every single round, which includes me who got spawn killed at the start of one of the rounds in the last game. So we're going to try and be a little more flexible in our op picks and try to adapt to our own team's play style. I typically play the game where I'm trying to counter the other team's play style and trying to break in and make holes in the other team and how they play it. But as a support, you want to be kind of countering your own team. So reading your own team, figuring out what they do and trying to help them succeed in whatever their plans are. So we'll try to do that this game. Uh, we are on Canal here, which is a great map for supports. Uh... Let's see, we could play the Cade on the main wall, or you, even a Bandit or a Mute, Mute for main stairs. Mute is really, really solid on this map. Uh, we played him yesterday on this map, actually, on the game channel, if you guys watch that. Uh, but we'll try to keep this wall closed. We'll do a Cade trick. Support my team by creating less entrances that the other team can actually use against them. Now, we are picking quite a few fraggers here, so I could even pick an echo and try to echo them around and try to get info for them on the echo, but I think keeping the main breach shut is going to be more important for us right now because if I'm echo and I'm on my cams and they're able to come through multiple different areas into sight, I could just get killed on my cams, so that's not ideal. So if we had someone already running wall denial, I'd probably pick the echo here uh, and then use those echo drones to try and drone my own team around and help them out. Look at this main wall up. I'm going to start out with just putting a Cade in the middle, and then they'll probably Thatcher it. If they do bring a Thatcher, I might be able to Cade trick it if they don't double EMP, and a lot of people mess up and don't double EMP. Oh, and we open the hatch, which I was not prepared for. So this Cade Claw gets all three walls, which is really nice. I'm pretty sure you can also put it up in... You can also put it up on the roof here, but I want to be able to pick it up so that I'm able to cage trick a little easier. Make some footholds here for if they do try to take Skybridge. It's just a nice way to contest the Skybridge push up and shoot their ankles and wall bang them because I'm farther away from the holes, so they won't be able to see me, but I'll be able to see them because they'll be their faces will be closer to the walls, so they won't be able to see uh, as far through the feet holes. That's like a simple perspective lesson. If you're farther away, then you'll be able to see more than the person who's closer to them. Uh, it looks like they might be coming for this main wall. We do have a guy watching green. We're looking pretty okay. I could support them from the cams, but because there's only two of us on site, it's probably more important for me to be actually on, on my gun right now. But being on the cams for your team when you can is also very important as a support player. And as a and as a fragger, like, being on the teams and getting info for your team is, is very, very strong and very important. So I hear them kind of getting near this breach. I'm going to throw a new K-Claw down. I'm getting droned out too. I'm gonna switch the cake claw up. So hopefully they EMP this side again. So again, I'm just gonna keep tricking, try to keep working them. Careful if they actually run in the box on me. I should be able to get these aces with this. And I sure do. So again, we're just jiggling those cake claws. I don't like that the hatch is open. I could technically get killed through the hatch if a guy was down there. Um, so typically I wouldn't open that. Uh, because it's just kind of what can screw your team over. And because they don't have the Thatcher, I can actually just separate these. So that way, um, they have to EMP both spots at the same time perfectly. And they're already kind of out of EMP, exactly. so this should be fine. So yeah, this wall is shut now. I can just hold a passive angle on this push-in. And again, I'm further away, so I should see them before they see me. Or just have a slight advantage in this in this angle. I'm just going to keep holding this. Now, they could just pre-fire through it. This is a common spot for someone to sit. In bridge. I got the bridge guy. I hear another one, Skybridge. Okay, I'm server checking. I'm kind of passive though. Do you have a red cam, guys, that you can watch for me? I have good mates. Okay. 
They're both bridge? Okay, sweet. So we got the text chats coming out. I got a good angle. Just me. Bridge lit. You're good. You can just chill. You can Locked just chill. One op, four remaining. So again, this angle is kind of nasty, right? I'm holding a head glitch, but I'm also holding it through these little holes. We have a crossfire as well. Well, this Grim could technically slam me off this. I'm going to play a very tight angle here. I could play it even more passive, but I kind of want to hold him at this choke point because I have this choke point. So I'm just going to keep holding it and hopefully I win the, win the gunfight here. I think this is the best possible angle. Yeah, and you can tell I can only see his lower half, meaning he cannot see me at all. I can only see his lower half. You see, I see his dick. Shoot him in the dick. Take him out. I love shooting dicks. And there we go. There's a solid 3-0. We also are 3-0 on the round. We also kept the wall shut, which is very, very important. If that wall shut, I'm not able to sit there. I'm not able to contest Skybridge. So keeping that close is actually the catalyst to get those kills. So making good plays... Uh, with your utility can lead to really really easy kills later in the round and I think that's just a great example of exactly how that works now I could try to play like a pulse call out everything with the pulse scanner pulse is a Support operator, right? You have this information from the scanner You can call it where everyone on the other team is and that information is going to give your team the ability to make plays and make decisions uh, Based off of all that information you're providing them as long as the information is actually accurate You want to make sure as a support that your information is as accurate as you can possibly make it Which also includes not calling out stuff that you called out previously if you don't still have current information So if let's say I see a guy trench and then 20 seconds later, I'm like, one's trench, one's trench, because I saw him trench 20 seconds ago. That guy could have got literally anywhere at that point. He could be upstairs. He could be all the way around to the scuba windows. It's just not worth calling out if the information is not accurate. Now, you could say he was last seen trench. He was last seen trench a while ago. Um, because then they know kind of where he could be at. So he was trench. He was trench. And then that kind of refers back to the call that you gave. And then they can say in their heads, oh, he could have gotten this far based off that amount of time since that call out. And I do see a drone trench here to try to take out. But we're gonna try to, yeah, we're gonna try to get, gather info for the team, figure out where they're actually coming from and uh, try to support them. Like we got this cab, this cab might be able to make a big play. We just gotta figure out where they're actually at. So we got one outside trench, one outside main door and, one, and two outside trench. So there we go, that's three of them. Now there's only two guys on the rest of the map. That's what that information means, two out front door now. They have a Nomad too. So I might be able to get a C4 kill as well. So primarily my goal here, feed information. Two out front door, one's going to the roof from front door. So there's only one front door right now. So I can call it the C4 for my teammate, obviously. I don't know where the rest are at. There's only one front door right now. He's in reception. Locked in recept, yeah. I could C4 this guy, I just want to make sure he's still there. Yeah, I can call yours, one sec. I don't see anyone near it. One's on the third floor, gonna come down main stairs, and one's outside front door again. I could support my team right now by pushing up. This ram's probably gonna get clapped though. I wanna kill this ram. Now it might Goyo's fighting them, so. Main stairs? To upper main, upper main stairs. Nice, I don't know where the last one's at. Could be anywhere. Good shit, dude. Another kill, a lot of good information for your team. And again, I'm staying alive, like, right? I'm the, I'm the guy that's going to be late round. I'm, I'm the support op. I'm not making those aggressive plays. I'm letting my roamers do the work, and I'm just providing with them with the info they need to actually do it. As much as I can. I couldn't find the last guy. Probably at that point in the 3v1, I don't need to walk around with my pulse scanner out because he could be anywhere. He could be in scuba. He could come trench door. Um, so it's probably better to actually get off my scanner in that late round. And there's always like there's always small mistakes you can fix, even in the rounds you win. So it's important to analyze the rounds even uh, even after the fact. Now I could go upstairs with a castle um, or play the echo for my team again. Like this site's pretty bunkered down. I'm gonna I'm gonna play the castle. Let's do the castle. We'll play up top. We'll do a little bit of a roam. Now we do have quite a bit of roamers already. So do I really want to roam or do I want to just anchor down sight with the castle? Now I don't want to castle my roamers out of sight. That wouldn't be good because we need them to be able to return to the site when they need to, especially if the other team does like a direct sight take. So castling them out of sight is actually a big wonder. It just traps them. It separates the teamwork. Like it, it cuts off our teamwork with our own team. So that way we can still flood out of the site and support them on the roam and they can still come back and fall off to the site if they need to. 
So I think cutting off Sky Bri or Old Bridge here would be really good. Get rid of this drone. I'm actually going to do two castles on it. One for here, and then a beeper, and one for back on the other side. This just makes them waste time actually going for this. If you want to go over yeah, there, you can rip that seconds. down. I'll just use the beeper for info. So my cab's clearly going to play over there. I thought he would probably play upstairs. This is a common entrance, so I'll just castle it off. I'm just kind of using castle as a time stall here. Not not as much to like actually hold something. Putting a beeper on green would be good, because a lot of people like to come through there. And then do some footballs here. Just be able to contest it from sight. And I still have two, so I'll use them upstairs. And maybe on this, these windows here. Just stop it from them being able to hop in these side windows uh, onto our roamers. I castle off your guys' 90 windows, so you don't have to worry about people hopping in there. I think I just saw a dude. Did I just see a dude castling that? I wasn't really paying attention, but I may have. Now, we do have to be careful bottom red. A beeper here actually would have been really good. But it's closed. We'll get the information off the barricade. Sounds like kitchen window. They may have Wonder broken a castle in there. Yeah, it's castled off. There's... You want to see for this? He's punching it. Never mind. He's already broke it. I just got to careful of this upside damn repel. A lot of people will peek this, so I'm just going to hold this angle. Might be a free kill if he sticks his face into it. This kitchen repel is very strong, but I've already wasted a minute of his time, and his teammates are dying everywhere else that eventually he's going to have to get off or do something else, right? I'm safe from this pillar. I'm not really exposed to anything right now. Val's kind of holding the other side. That's the Amaro. Uh, really dumb play. If he did it off the sound of the ram, it actually might have been good. Because the ram sound was really loud after the fact, but he had already amarred in, so I'd already heard him. I uh, just careful of this window. I don't know if he's still on it. I think he must have got off at this point. He hasn't made any noise at all, so I'm gonna assume it's clear. Plus, his team is dying everywhere else. So now we can actually go help our roamers. This is where our roamers are getting slaughtered. So maybe making some ponchos here to watch Skybridge. Holding this down might help. Let's head red. Do you know where the other two are at? We're just gonna Check hold this Skybridge for now. Might be able to get a quick pick and fall off. Basically, if I get a kill here, I'm going to go back to site because we have nobody on site right now. One sky bridge, it's no man. Didn't get the kill, but there's no Another point putting up. my face back in the punch hole that he's already watching. So I'm going to go back to site. Two sky bridge. Kind of lock it down from here. Okay, there's two sky bridge. Crouch not ping. So I'm going to make Another sure one. I actually go up and help this guy. Yo, good right. shit, dog. And I was a little bit late, but he still locked it down. They were really sloppy. They didn't actually know where he was at. He killed all three without a single one of them looking at him. Big blunder by them not droning, not getting the info. And it costed them. And honestly, they knew I was top green, so they knew he was somewhere else. Maybe they just assumed that the last guy was in sight, so they just ran in and died. But honestly, nice shots by this guy. Nice hold. He made it work, and that's all that matters, you know? So they're going to be main wall here. A lot of people bring wall denial, so I think I might just play the Mav. Uh, I have not been a fan of the vertical grip. I know I was hyping it up at the start of the season, but it turns out, uh, or sorry, the horizontal grip. It turns out the vertical grip is just a lot better. So I've been using that on pretty much everything. You don't actually need the extra speed from the horizontal grip I found. Um, so yeah, I've been just running the vertical grip, helping with the recoil, making sure you can actually land those shots, you know? This is a gun I could put the suppressor on, um, but I like the muzzle break. I just think it's it's a bit of a sniper with the muzzle break. You can land those first few shots just so much easier, I find. So I run the muzzle break on the M4, and I, I like it. So here we are up 3-0. It is canal, though, so it could be difficult to win an attack. We just have to make sure we stay focused and don't, like, overestimate our advantage because, yes, it is 3-0, but they could win those three defense just as easily because of the fact that it is canal. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go for the main breach. I do have to be careful of this run out. I could bring claymores for it, but I'm not a fan of claymores. I like the, I like the flashbangs, the playmaking, the potential that flashbangs provide because I could go somewhere else later with those flashes, right? Uh, I will probably play Thatcher instead, actually, because I can just double EMP the breach uh, if they have the ban. I don't actually know if they... Oh, they have Legion. I didn't even need Thatcher. I found that out a second too late. I probably would have played uh, more of like a Nomad or a Gridlock or a Ying or someone who can actually like get the plant down. A Glaz, maybe, um, because we don't need that uh, wall denial. Wall denial, denial. But Thatcher, we can still make use of. We can still EMP uh, Valcams, Burn Mamidas, get the cap cans. Uh, if we're like pushing into the site and not sure if they're on the doorway, I can EMP them. I can still work a little bit of pressure and have these claymores for the runouts, which is nice. I might actually go across and do the opposite run out because they don't need my EMPs. I've got the time, so I'm just going to run over here and uh, get this claymore down. Ace is checking all this, so I should be fine. Looks like he's also going to claymore this. 
<laughs> and we have three claimers on that door. That bitch is locked down. Now, if they have a Solus, of course, he can do something, but... Okay, I could push with my team here and just drone it out. Oh, wow, that is really unfortunate. Cue Stim, cue Stim, cue Stim. Awful timing on that on that drone. I don't know how nobody killed him, but... What are you gonna do, you know? Okay, so I can drone here. Just keep stimming when you get them if you can. Ace, I would have preferred you made a non-vaultable rotate so we don't have to vault in. That gives them a sound cube when we actually enter in. Now oh, this is looking pretty free. Yo, we can push the breach. There's no rotate hole. It's just the head holes on um. On top red. The server wall. Song call server. Just careful of the swings real quick. Down to one friend. Oh, he has a hole underneath as well. I missed that on my drone. Unfortunate. Yeah, so that run out really, really completely screwed us. That's why I like putting pressure in other areas, typically. Like, as a solo player, I like to take something by myself. I would love to go Skybridge right there. Uh, but then I felt the need to be like, I'm a support. I got to help my team. I drone for my team. I'm going to let them make the play, right? I'm going to support them. Uh, which just ended up with a guy running out and killing all of us. So it's obviously not ideal. Uh, but it's the way it goes, you know, it happens sometimes. We could go Habana here to get the hatches. We could even play like Buck Hard Breach to get the hatches. That way we can still do Soft Breach and still help people. Doka P good, could be good just for getting in, or we could do the Nomad for the flank. We have the Ram, uh, so the Nomad, we were able to air jab off the flanks. I always prefer Nomad over Gridlock. I think the Gridlocks are just too easy to flank on. People can just walk through them and not make a lot of noise compared to hitting an air jab or shooting an air jab. It's just a lot louder. Uh, we do have the Habana for the hatches. We have the Ram for the floor. So this looks like a solid vert take coming up. We also have IQ and Ash. So that's a two solid entries. And IQ can find whether it's a Pulse or a Valk to stop them from C4ing us from below. So this is a really, really good lineup for a vertical take. So that's what we're going to go for. Typically, when I do these vert takes, I like to come in from top main because I'm not getting C4'd. It's safe. Um, and then I can also just work my way slowly down the staircase and then air jab off the main flank once I actually get up to it. So we're going to try to do that. Do have to be careful of this window spawn peak as well as the hop out. Again, we want to keep our drone alive. Finding the site is okay, but make sure we can get it out and actually use it is good. And I could even come in from like top yellow stairs if I wanted later. Like I could air jab off main, go up, come back through Skybridge and air jab off that flank and also work a little bit there by myself. So I'm still playing a little bit solo, but what I'm achieving is really, really impacting the team by setting up those flanks, right? And they're going to be doing their own thing. So most of the time it's better just to not stack up on everyone, even if you are playing the support character. I mean, sometimes you got to stack up just to get things done, right? like uh, open a breach you know you might need two or three people to actually open a breach but after that it's okay to go make plays on your own if the timing is right and if it's the right opportunity to do so so check top main here nobody's here so i can quickly open this up i want to make sure i'm joining from here because if i drone outside this door and they have a solar or something they could just hop out on me so i want to just make sure i'm playing as safe as possible and i could even check this this window shut so i'm good no way I'm coming down from top main on him. Yeah, with my gym. Uh, careful with the main swing. Still gym. He's in radio now. He's in radio. He's dead. He's dead. So I don't have to worry about main because it's air jab. I can reload my air jab charge. I can even look in the site here. Maybe get a quick pick. I'm in the bathroom. I'm going to go prone so I don't get killed from that and drone. Okay, 2v4. That's not good. You guys have a yellow flank cam? There's a Valk. Don't trust my teammates to really watch this cam, so I'm going to be careful. I hear a cav somewhere, I think. I'm a little worried. That's the vigil. I did hear that guy. I just wasn't sure where at. It wasn't actually the cav I heard. I might nomad off the top floor flank. Careful of this cav. Coming up yellow. I can drone him. I can drone him. Nice, nice. I'm going to find the last guy. We got time. Just hold yellow flank for a sec. I'm droning down main. Just to let him know what I'm doing. Okay, he's by scuba closet. Or sorry, sorry. Uh, a site closet. Now we can just push down. Air drop off this rotate. Blind the bomb chest. He's going to get air jab off that, I think. 
Got a flashbang. I can flash him and push him here. And that's the flashbang power, and that's the support victory. Nine and one on the support. Don't say supports can't frag. It's just important to understand that you're still an individual player when you are playing that support. So I hope you guys learned something. This actually turned out to be a fantastic game. Um, we actually had teammates this time, which is really nice. Yeah, good calls, guys. Let them know they're good. Uh, oh, shit. Almost died. Almost died in a chair. What's new? Daily, daily pox death. Um, yeah, this is a great match. So I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought. Uh, let me know who, uh, who you think about when, before you go to sleep at night. And goodbye.